Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is May the 27th, 2024, and we have another breaking news alert for you. Tonight, it does look like that things are getting worse by the day. Uh, all you have to do is just look at the news, folks. Uh, but if this is your first time here to our channel, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you will be notified of our upcoming broadcast but this is the breaking news coming in right now the mission of the french army in ukraine russia was announced by france and ukraine not even the dead will come back uh ukraine and france now has signed an agreement on the deployment of regular french troops these are not mercenaries these are not people fighting for money. This is the French army that will be deployed in Russia and, uh, I'm sorry, in Ukraine to fight the Russians. France proceeds to send their military forces of its regular army to Ukraine under the mantle of trainers. The head of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Skursky, or Oleksandra Sersky announced that he had signed the necessary documents for the arrival of the first French trainers, quote unquote, in the Ukrainian camps that is the full deployment of French regular troops for the first time since the beginning of the war. So folks, this is the straw that will break the camel's back. Russia has repeatedly warned over and over again, that if regular NATO forces, and th this is what they are, even though they're coming from France alone, but believe me, the other NATO member nations are going to be sending their troops also into Ukraine. This is a red line for Russia that once NATO starts inserting their troops, then this conflict that we have seen is going to escalate to an entirely different level. So, um, like I said, we've been telling you this from day one, that NATO has been fighting in Ukraine covertly, though. They have been sneaking in and manning all of those high-tech weapon systems. But now, just in the last couple months, now they are announcing this before the world. That yes, indeed, we are going to be sending our military, our regular forces into Ukraine to fight Russia. So, folks, you know, we played you a video a couple of days ago where one of the British uh, politicians uh, had an interview and he admitted on the interview that the UK was already at war with Russia. This is a British politician. Shouldn't he know what's going on? And he said that. Uh, the Prime Minister of the UK and their government are not telling the people what's really going on. But he said, we've been fighting Russia already for months. So this is the start of the official World War III that France, the first nation that is publicly putting this information out, until today, they were supposedly sending mercenaries of the Foreign Legion. This decision comes after an agreement with the French Minister of Defense, Sebastian Lecornu. The Russian response was that they will not even return the bodies of the French soldiers to their families, nor will they take French prisoners, as happened during to the Germans in World War II. So Russia is saying that we're not going to take prisoners. We're just going to shoot them on sight. We will not take any French prisoners. You will not get the bodies back. This is one of the things that we're going to do. It is characteristic that approximately 350,000 German soldiers captured at the Stalingrad battle by Marshal von Paulus, the 6th Army, only 5,000 returned to Germany after 10 years in Siberian POW camps. France signs agreement with Ukraine for French military instructors to go to Ukraine to train the Ukrainian army. So uh, supposedly, folks, these are trainers. These are only going to be trainers. And I have some uh, swampland. 
I have some beachfront property I want to sell you in the North Pole. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov or Sergei Ladrov said Russia would take steps to counter this threat, while Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov warned of serious consequences from the appearance of foreign military forces in Ukraine. So, um, I don't know what to tell you, folks, but uh, this is happening. You know, that's all I can say is uh, this is a video, but um, we're going to have regular French forces now uh, going to fight uh, in Ukraine on the behalf of NATO. Breaking news, France to send military instructors to Ukraine General Orlesk. Uh, Orles Sandrik Sersky, commander-in-chief of Ukraine's armed forces, said France has agreed to send instructors to Ukraine to train Ukrainian military personnel. I have already signed the documents. So, folks, we did have a lot of people commenting on the way I pronounced some of these names. Folks, I don't speak Ukrainian. Uh, I don't speak a lot of these languages. Uh, so, if you're fluent in these languages, well, it's easy for you to pronounce uh, you know, O L E K S A N D R S Y R S K Y. Yeah, I mean, try to pronounce these names yourself and see if you can do a better job. So give me a break. We're trying to do the best that we can on the pronunciation of these uh, different names. France's decision has angered Russia, which has repeatedly said the presence of foreign military forces in Ukraine could lead to an escalation of the conflict and would be met with severe retaliation. I am happy to welcome France's initiative to send instructors to Ukraine to train Ukrainian soldiers, Skursky said in a telegram post after talks with French def uh, Defense Minister Sebastien Lecorny via a video call. I have already signed the documents that will allow the first French trainers, quote unquote, to visit our training centers and familiarize themselves with the infrastructure and staff, he said. Skursky gave no further details, but he said he believed France's determination would encourage other partners to join the ambitious project. The Russian military will annihilate all the French soldiers who come to Ukrainian soil, threaten State Duma Deputy uh, Pertor Tolstoy. I guess that's how you pronounce that, P-Y-O-T-R-T-O-L-S-T-O-Y. We will kill all the French soldiers who come to the territory of Ukraine, everyone, he told the BFM TV channel. The Russian lawmaker also claimed that 147 of the 367 French mercenaries who arrived earlier in Ukraine has also been killed. On March the 19th, the director of the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service, the SVR, Sergei Nereskin, announced that France is already preparing a military force to be sent to Ukraine, which will initially amount to 2,000 soldiers. So uh, Macron has repeatedly said that they have up to 20,000 soldiers that they could insert into uh, Ukraine very, very quickly. But that is not the biggest headline that we have tonight. Folks, uh, the news that I'm going to give you is very grave because what is happening right now is NATO is now prepping the battlefield for a nuclear first strike, a decapitation strike on Russia right now and Iran because NATO through Ukraine is starting to hit Russia's ICBM radars that are specifically designed to detect incoming nuclear missiles from the United States. Now, these sites that Ukraine is hitting, it's really NATO though, are sometimes 1,500 to 1,800 kilometers away from the Ukrainian front line. It has nothing to do with the uh, Ukraine war, but it has everything to do with knocking these radar sites out so they can launch a first strike, a decapitation strike on Moscow, St. Petersburg, Leningrad without Russia knowing about it. Dangerous new developments, NATO blinds command and control systems of Russia's nuclear forces, Kiev bombs strategic radars. Now, we can confirm now 
that a second radar site has been hit. Is NATO taking measures for a nuclear first strike? And I think they are, folks. We told you this in our previous broadcast, that NATO is doing this because this coincides with their plan they have had for a long time. You see, when this war started, you cannot move all of the Western military equipment in a week or two, folks. It takes months and months and sometimes years. And especially if you're going to be fighting a world war with a peer-to-peer competition like Russia or China, it takes a very, very long time to send the tanks, the fighting vehicles, Bradley fighting vehicles, the armor, all of the artillery, all of the ammunition. It takes months for the logistics to catch up. And that's what NATO and the United States has been doing the last two years. They have been arming Poland, arming Romania, arming Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Finland, Sweden. They have been pumping weapons systems. We have over 3,000 Abram tanks now, probably more than that, thousands and thousands of Bradley fighting vehicles. Everything that you would need to fight Russia is already now in Europe. And now the last piece of the puzzle is being put on the battlefield That is the F-16 fighters that are now being deployed to Ukraine. And these F-16 fighters can carry the B-61 nuclear gravity bomb on that airplane, making them a nuclear delivery system. So now, just another coincidence, Ukraine has started attacking Russia's long-range radar systems to detect incoming ballistic missiles, ICBMs, from the United States, folks. They're trying to blind them because I believe that NATO is going to do a first strike on Russia. I think it's coming sometime this year. I don't know when it's going to happen. But, folks, they're prepping the battlefield right now. Ukraine shot down a second radar of Russia's nuclear early warning and combat system and they attempted to shoot down another one with Moscow, now expecting a fourth radar station to be hit as well. This development is extremely worrying as NATO attempts to destabilize the combat command and control systems of the Russian strategic nuclear forces. And like I said before, folks, this has nothing to do with Ukraine and nothing to do with with the Ukrainian war. The United States of America and NATO designed the war in Ukraine to allow us, the United States of America's military, to pump all of these weapons into Europe under the disguise of helping Ukraine fight Russia. And now everything is almost in place for NATO to pull the trigger. I've been talking about this for over two years. I told you that NATO would invade Ukraine, that NATO would launch the largest military strike since World War II, and it's about to come to pass, folks, if you've been watching our channel. The Ukrainians hit the Voronezh DM radar in Orenburg. This time, the Ukrainians hit the Voronezh Voronezh DM advanced over the horizon early warning radar system in the Orsk region of Orenburg, 1,800 kilometers from the Ukrainian border on May the 26th, that was yesterday, in the Orenburg region reported that a Ukrainian drone crashed near Orsk, 20 kilometers from Orsk near the village of Gorkovsky. There is a the Volonez M radar object 7357 with a range of 6,000 kilometers. This element of the Russian early warning system became fully operational in 2017. The zone area of responsibility includes the entire southern direction from Saudi Arabia to central China. It also controls the sector from the Tal La Macon desert to the Mediterranean coast while replacing the Dipner radar in Kazakhstan. While the Russians initially reported that the radar was not hit, satellite images now show that it has been damaged. It should be noted that the distance from the Ukrainian border Kharkov to this particular radar station 
exceeds 1,500 kilometers in a straight line. The Ukrainians attacked either from Kharkov or Kazakhstan. Orsk is almost on the border. The Russians are now talking about an attempt by Kiev to shoot down yet another strategic radar, Object 1653, of the Russian missile attack warning system, the MAWS or MALS, this time in Cuban. The attack was carried out with several kamikaze drones. The other day, the armed forces of Ukraine hit the long-range strategic fixed radar over the horizon Voronezh DM-77Y6-DM missile attack warning system in Armavir, Kransnodar. So we reported on that, folks, that that was the first one. The second one was yesterday, and now they are tempted to do a third one. Its deactivation is only in the interest to NATO as it will blind Russia in the southern direction. The Voronezh DM in N uh, Armavir looks with one half to the Indian Ocean and the other at the southern and central Europe, the Mediterranean Sea, North Africa, and the Middle East. So, folks, Ukraine is not doing this. I have breaking news for you, emergency alert. NATO is now taking out Russia's long-range strategic nuclear radar systems. They have hit uh, at least two of their radar uh, sites. They targeted two others. Uh, If uh, this continues, then... uh, You know, what is Putin going to do? Is he going to launch an all-out nuclear strike because he knows that we are preparing a first strike of our own with the F-16 fighter jets? Folks, this is getting very, very serious. And I do believe that NATO is not going to stop. Do you understand what I'm saying? The United States of America and NATO is not going to stop this war until we are utterly destroyed Or Russia is utterly destroyed. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're not going to stop until there's only one standing. Do I want our country destroyed? Well, I would be a fool to say yes, because I live here, folks. But this is what is happening in the world. The Russians are waiting for a new blow. They are looking for a way to react. Russian analysts stress that the new blow from the Ukrainian Military should be expected. According to them, the next NATO target is the Voronez M radar in Lek Tunis in the Leningrad region. If Kiev or NATO hits this particular radar, then Russia's defense capability in the northern direction will also be reduced. Moscow will lose the ability to detect in time the launch of missiles with nuclear warheads against it and accordingly to react quickly to what is happening. Attempts to disable these and other similar strategic radars cannot be seen only as attacks by Kiev, but as an attack by the entire NATO bloc. And that's what it is, folks. NATO is priming the battlefield. They're going to launch a first strike on Russia, a decapitation trying to take out uh, Moscow, uh, the Kremlin, Putin, all of his generals. They're going to do it, folks. Listen, they're going to do it. Will Russia react in time? We don't know. But this is being set up right now before our very eyes. Russian analysts are proposing to officially establish a special no-fly zone over the neutral waters of the Black Sea for reconnaissance and fighter aircraft from landlocked NATO countries in the area. All unmanned aircraft such as the RQ-4, Global Hawk, and others must be shot down on site along with the manned aircraft such as the Boeing E-3 Sentry and the Boeing RC-135 Rivet Joint. So now Russia is stating that they're looking at shooting down all of our surveillance planes in the Black Sea. NATO countries must understand that hiding behind Ukraine will not allow them to continue to harm Russia. In Rogozin, The United States has made Ukraine hit Russian strategic targets. Washington has never been able to achieve superiority over Moscow in the military strategic field. This is evidenced by the confrontation between the USA and the USSR during the Cold War and the modern rivalry with Russia, said the former head of the state-owned company Roscosmos and now senator of the Federation Council of the Russian Federation. 
He said, in his opinion, now the United States has decided to fight Russia with hands with the hands of Ukraine. He believes Washington ordered Kiev to hit important Russian targets. So, folks, it is not Ukraine doing this. They don't have the technology. They don't have the flight paths. We are giving them the satellite information where to hit. But you can see on this picture, uh, this is one of the recent radar stations that was hit. Two has been hit so far. Russia said that... Um, they are going after about two or three more. So this is going to escalate, folks, and it's not going to be good for the world. Like I said, NATO right now is priming the battlefield for a decapitation strike on Vladimir Putin. They're trying to take out Russia in one swift blow. Will they do it? I don't know. But, uh, you know, if this doesn't get you worried, I don't know what it is, folks, because uh, it does look like that NATO is not going to stop. We have a lot, a lot of other headlines going on. I'm just going to read headlines right here. European countries not at war with Russia. You know, this is so funny, folks. You're not at war with Russia, but you're sending French troops right now into Ukraine. The French president said the EU countries plan to continue providing assistance to Ukraine as long as it takes. But we are not at war with uh, Russia. No, we are not. Hand me another croissant. European countries are not at war with Russia and its people, French President Emmanuel Macron said in a speech in Dresden. Well, folks, what the hell do you call that? I call that war when you're sending in your French troops, regular French troops. So, like I said, these guys, they lie out of their, their rear end. That's basically what they're talking out of. And... Um, it's, it's just going to get worse before it gets better. This is more breaking news. North Korean missile disintegrates into fragments over the Yellow Sea. So Kim Jong-un was going to launch another military satellite. Evidently, it blew up. I don't know if we had anything to do with it, but that's a picture of the satellite exploding. We do have another article on that information. Um, we also have some information that two... Jordanians and one uh, terrorist tried to come into a military base uh, in Virginia. Weeks ago, two individuals in a box truck attempted to breach the gates of Quantana, uh, Quantinco, Quantinco Mil Marine Corps Base in Triangle, Virginia. Armed guards immediately stopped them, and the base's brass quickly covered up the incident. So evidently, two uh, Jordanians... One of them was on a terror watch list, uh, tried to enter the base. I don't have time to read all of these articles, but I will leave all of these articles uh, in the description box. This is a headline, did terrorists just do a dry run at a Marine Corps base? Team Biden needs to fill the nation in. So they covered this up for over two weeks, folks, but the word got out that uh, a known terrorist and another Jordanian with no papers, tried to breach Quantico Military Marine Corps Base in Virginia just two weeks ago. So let's keep on with the headlines. North Korea reveals satellite launch plans. We just showed you that the DPR sent its first device into orbit last November, saying that it was needed to address increasing U.S. military activity. So they tried to do it again, but the satellite blew up before it could get into orbit. And uh, I'm sure little Kim is not happy about that. We also have breaking news coming in from Papi New Guinea that over 2,000 people were buried alive under rubble after a major landslide. So if you've been watching the news lately, the weather has completely gone crazy. All of these natural disasters, uh, tornadoes are ripping through the United States. We're having uh, landslides, massive rainstorms across the world. The South Pacific Island nation has formally requested international assistance in dealing with Friday's disaster. More than 2,000 people could be buried under the rubble left by Friday's deadly landslide in Papua New Guinea. AP News has reported citing a letter the South Pacific Island nation's authorities have sent to the United, station, uh, United Nations on early Friday, the site of Mount Mongelo, located some 60 kilometers, 373 miles to the north of the capital, Port Moresby, 
collapse completely covering the Yambeli village with a mix of rocks, mud, and uprooted trees. The natural disaster also severed the main provincial highway in the area. So, folks, please pray for their families. Like I said, uh, things are happening around the world. This is also breaking news. Germany and France seeking joint U, uh, EU air defense for Ukraine. The two nations will reportedly hold talks on the European Sky Shield initiative this week. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and French President Emmanuel Macron are expected to unveil a plan this week for closer cooperation on strengthening Europe's air defense systems, Bloomberg reported on Monday. The German and French leaders are set to discuss the initiative on Tuesday. People familiar with the matter told the outlet Macron arrived in Germany on Saturday for a three-day state visit. So, like I said, they're trying to coordinate all of their defensive systems against Russia because they know they are going to war with Russia, folks. This is also breaking news. Moscow reacts to NATO's chief call for attacks deeper inside Russia, and that is exactly what is happening. Jen Stolenberg does not have the authority to lobby for strikes with Western arms, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said. So he doesn't look very happy, folks. NATO Secretary Jen Stolenberg has exceeded his mandate by calling for Ukraine to be allowed to use Western donated weapons for strikes deep inside Russia, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said. So, like I said, I don't have time to read all of these articles. We're just going to read headlines. So much information coming in right now. Version of the dagger strike on the Star Starokon Constant. Tynov airfield and hit an F-16. So this is the uh, this is the word here, folks. And you try to pronounce all of these Ukrainian names. It's uh, it's a lot easier said than done. So anyway, Russia launched the Kinzel Dagger missile on this airfield where U.S. F-16s are going to be housed. F-16 fighters may have been hit on May the 26th, just a few days ago in the Starokonstantinov airfield. On May 26, the Russian Aerospace Forces twice attacked the airfield in the Kim Kimnitsky region, where F-16 fighters were transferred to Ukraine, have been stationed. So this is our uh, F-16 fighter jets that were donated to, to Ukraine, double strike of the Russian Aerospace Forces. So, folks, Russia is trying to take out these airfields that these uh, F-16s will uh, be deployed. Let's keep on going with more headlines. Russia raises observation balloons on the russo finnish border. Moscow moves ahead with changes to maritime borders with Lithuania and Finland in the Baltic Sea. So Russia now has put up these balloons. They are stationary. You can see the guide wires uh, so they can survey uh, the area with cameras. Russia has begun deploying fixed observation balloons on Finland's eastern border, which are tethered by cables to fixed positions. According to Russian media, these automated observation points are necessary to prevent illegal immigration to Finland. So, um, like I said, a lot of different things are happening in many different places. We already read that article there. Let's keep on going. Ukraine is at a turning point. Open fronts in Kharkiv and Chavashar. New front in Sumni. Uh, no younger than Kershaw and Zaporizhia. So, like I said, um, a lot of different fronts are now being opened up by the Russian military. They are starting to launch their massive counteroffensive. Uh, we expect the full force of Russia in the next month or two to be deployed into Ukraine to take more Ukrainian territory. This is also breaking news. Cemetery of the Ukrainian city of Lviv. Thousands of flags of dead Ukrainian soldiers wave on the grave. So according to many, many uh, analysts, over 600,000 Ukrainian men and women have died in the war against Russia. Close to a million have been wounded. That's why Ukraine has ran out of soldiers, folks. Nobody wants to fight. 
because they know they're going to be sent to their death. So this is just a picture of one of the grave sites across Ukraine. In the cemetery in the city of Lviv, thousands of flags fly over the graves of Ukrainian soldiers who gave their lives in defense of their country. This spectacle captures the numerous casualties suffered by the Ukrainian military with each flag representing a fallen soldier. So this is very, uh, very sad, folks. Very, very sad. All of these people did not have to die. I mean, look at that. All of these flags represent a Ukrainian man or woman who gave their life basically for NATO and the United States. That we use the Ukrainian population to do our dirty work. And this is just one of thousands of graveyards across Ukraine that are filled to the brim with dead soldiers. And I really feel bad for the Ukrainian people, folks, because we use their country. We did. Our country, NATO, used their country as fodder. NATO, breaking news, Parliamentary Assembly backs Ukraine for attacks with Western weapons on targets inside of Russia. He urges the lifting of restrictions on Ukraine to use Western weapons. So they have approved now the use of all Western weapons to hit deep inside Russia. Like I said, this is a countdown, folks. The clock is ticking right now. Uh, we don't know when the major battle is going to take place, but it won't be that long. Um, we also have breaking news that Chechens, uh, Chechen soldiers have been deployed in uh, the front line in Kharkiv region. The increased mobility of Russia uh, to aid... Uh, let me read that one more time. Increased mobility for Russia aid to Ukraine. So the Russians are now deploying the Chechens, which were the key fighting force in Bakhmut and Maropol. Uh, now they're being deployed on the front in Kharkov to go ahead and take that region. So many things are happening all at once, folks. It's hard to keep up. Uh, this is also breaking news. The United States has sent a new batch of at least 300 M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine. So, like I said, we are stepping up our military deployment to Ukraine. The United States sends over 300 Bradleys M113S and M577 to bolster the Ukrainian forces. Uh, they're rearming them. But the problem is, folks, they have plenty of weapons. Is They don't have enough uh, soldiers. That's the problem. We got a few more articles here. And this is what I've been talking about. Kaya Kales, Prime Minister of Estonia. We don't want peace talks with Russia. We want war and victory. Ukraine needs arms, ammunition, and training. So this is the Prime Minister of Estonia, Kaya Kales. And she is typical of NATO and their response. They don't want peace. And they made the announcements, folks. We don't want peace with Russia. We want to destroy them, like I've been telling you for two years. So this is going to be a cage fight. This is going to be a fight to the death. Either NATO's going to win, United States is going to win, or Russia's going to win. There, there's only going to be one winner, folks. And they're going to have to fight it out on the battlefield. The Prime Minister of Estonia Kaya Kalas, during her statements, emphasized that she does not want peace talks with Russia, but for Ukraine to win the war. As she characteristically said, Ukraine must win the war and Russia must understand that it has lost. This is our plan A, B, and C. Words and sanctions are important, but they are not enough. Ukraine needs arms, ammunition, and training. So she's basically stated what I have been telling you for a very long time. So, you know, all I can tell you is that these warmongers right here, they are not going to quit until there is a nuclear uh, bomb exploding in their city. They're not going to quit. So, I did want to update you on today's news. This is Memorial Day. Thank you all the U.S. soldiers that have given their lives for the United States of America to keep us free, but I believe that freedom is coming to an end. I believe judgment has been rendered against the United States, folks. I'm sorry. 
I do believe our country is going to be judged for the sodomy, for the LGBTQ that we promote around the world, for all the aborted babies for the last 60 years. Folks, judgment is here. We are Mystery Babylon, I believe. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, then you're going to face some difficult times. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. If you're not sure that if you died today, you would go to heaven and you want to make sure today is the day of salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So if you will pray this prayer, believe it in your heart, Jesus will save you right now. Just say, Dear Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me and you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again. But folks, time is running out. You know, I don't know how long we're going to be able to do these broadcasts. At some point in the future, I believe our internet will go down. Our power grids will go down. I believe that a major war is coming between the United States, NATO, and Russia. You can see it happening day by day with all the news reports coming in. Will the confrontation happen this November the 11th like Philip Barnett? I don't know, folks, but it sure is looking more and more like that. So thank you for watching our channel. Please share our videos out. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.